Well, everybody, I want to welcome you all back to Radio Entrepreneurs, where we are continuing to tell stories about this new economy, entrepreneurship, leadership, how to how people are adapting. And you know, one of my favorite reports, and it really is one of my favorite reports every time, uh, is the Sharky Report, starting uh, Sheriff Sharky himself, Phil Sharky. Welcome back, Jeff. Thank you so much for having me again. It's always a pleasure to be on, on uh, the broadcast here with you guys. I look forward to it. Well, I brought my bodyguard today, Phil, because I want to make sure that, you know, everything is straight up and up. You know, yeah, see there's, a lot, there's a lot of deception going on in the world and you got to get, you know, you got to you got to do a lot of work to make sure what's truth and fiction. So true. Yes, so true. And it really leads to my topic of today. Again, as you know, my, my company, The Higher Authority, we do pre-employment background screening, background checks for small, medium and large companies and landlords for tenancy purposes. And we'd like to go, Jeff, is sort of more, more interactive today and see if uh, you can come up with or, or some questions you might have. But the common questions we get about background screening are, are the first questions I'll get from a, a potential client and what people want to know about background screening. So I don't know if any come to mind for you, but the very first thing I get is, do you need permission? You know, with the internet, with the Googling and the, all the search engines, people are like, well, I'll just go online and, and type away a name and, and see what comes up. That's, a, that's something people can do, but for my line of work, I cannot do anything any longer without a signed release and authorization. So even if I was checking out your staff by, there today- By the I employer need or by the recruiting, per, the, the person being recruited? Very good question. It has to be signed by the individual. So the person we're doing the background check on, it can be from directly from the employer to provide to them. It can be from the recruiting agency. I need their con consent and their release. So if I was doing the background check on you, Jeff Davis, I need your authorization form uh, sent to me and then I can begin, but I can't do anything until I have that, that release form. Hands are tied by the FCRA, which strictly oversees our industry. Is that national? That is, it's a, it's a federal law and states also have their own version and take on it. I used to have, you know, long time clients who would call me and say, you know, Phil, something's going on in the office. Here's the name and date of birth. Can you check out, you know, a uh, uh, this or that uh, on this. I, I think there's been a theft here. We have a lot of jewelry clients. We can't any longer. I still need that signed release. I can direct them. I can do some criminal checks, direct them to what course, but for me to do it, I need their authorization, protects the individual. Well, and I would say uh, slam dunk. Someone doesn't want to give you authorization. I wouldn't hire them. Exactly. I always talk about expenses and people talk about the cost of screening. I go, the first thing is if you get any pushback or, or negativity from the individual, you're still the employer. You have the right. If they don't want to work in your place, they don't want to sign a release. It's for their own protection. Then I think you might be getting red flag city right there. Their answer to you might be telling you that uh, maybe I don't need to go any further. I think I have my either you're a, uh, an argumentative person. You're going to be difficult. There's a lot to read into that or you have something to hide. Right. Wow. Excellent. The next question I get a lot is, uh, Jeff, how long does it take? You know, very simple question. How long does it take to do a background check? Three days for us. I have many clients I've received over the last few years that are waiting seven to 10 days from one of these larger screening companies, these national firms. I, I don't want to give out who, who they may be, but uh, if you're waiting more than three days, like we guarantee, you're waiting too long. They don't care about your work. They're not doing it fast enough. We do that because we jump on it. We're very quick. Uh, and we don't want you to lose a good applicant. You may have someone that you're very high on. And if you're waiting seven to 10 days, they may go take a job somewhere else. So it's got to be good information, but it has to be quick. Uh, some things are out of my control. I can't do in three days and we'll explain that. But if you're waiting longer than three days, your screening uh, uh, firm does not really care about your work. They're, they're, they're too bogged down with other issues. They're, they're not responding to you, which is most important. So three days. Well, and I would say, you know, for me, you're right. If it's seven days, I'm probably not showing the candidate the initiative that I have a real interest in them. Absolutely. And also a lot of our clients have positions to fill. I'll have managers doing the role of the person they want to hire. They're, they're tired. They don't want to wait seven to 10 days. They don't want to wait a moment longer to fill that position uh, while, you know, it's just caught down in, in inner office uh, red tape. You know, there, there's no need for that. So, so quick is, is important, quick and thorough. That, that's what our goal is. Um, any questions you think about, Jeff, as far as background screen that comes to mind when, when you first interviewed me in, in the process, like what goes into it, please do uh, reach out, let me know. Well, you know, my focus is always trying to figure out uh, how people handle adversity, what's their values, what's their character, 
do they tell the truth about everything? Can you see them really sort of thinking about things and really giving you a full emotional, uh, genuine answer? Because people who cannot do any of those things are, you know, it's all about character for me. And it's so, and you just nailed it. That's the number one thing. And that's what our background check shows. It's really integrity. When I say 30% turn out fraudulent, that means 30% that I surface turn out with some sort of lie situation. They're not being truthful. They don't have that integrity. I know. And, and again, I get a lot of pushback from my friends. We're not big brother. I'm not spying. No one is perfect. I'm not going to come down on someone with a speeding violation from eight years ago. To me, it's the handshake and the lie. It's like, hi, Jeff. Nice to meet you. That degree I put on the resume, it's not true. Flat out, if they're going to lie that day, much like that Bengal tiger that was behind you, a leopard doesn't change their spots, they're going to lie again. They've already shown you what type of person they are. And that's what we look for. Resumes, of course, are always boosted and you want to have your best foot forward and sometimes people go too far. It always but, amazes on. me how some people lie and how it becomes a chronic habit for them and it, how they think they're never going to get caught. It, it, it's so true. It becomes, I would, I would assume a lot of these people would pass a lie detector test because the lie to them becomes belief. And many of the famous people I've shown you in the past, they would actually, you know, believe I have that degree, Jeff, I have it. And we found out they don't. And they've convinced themselves that there were three credit shorts, but they've earned it or the, the, the role they had at a company. Well, I did the management. I really was the main person there and they weren't. Well, you know what? I also believe it's uh, a problem that we, have a society that does not like to call people out for lying. And so I think, you know, that's in a whole other topic. Uh, I called somebody out on a lie yesterday. I didn't call it a lie, but I called them out on it. And I had to go back two, three times to call them out on it because right. I think people and people are always like, oh, Jeff, you didn't. And I'm like, wait a second, they're lying. You, know? you, you just you nailed it as well. People, and I find a lot of our clients, which works well for them, we become sort of the bad guys, the black heads. It's tough to be negative. People recoil from that. They don't want conflict. They don't want strife. So they do the background check. They bring us on board. They still have that great rapport. We're the bad guys. And we're the ones that find out they lied about their school. They lied about their job. They lied about their criminal record history. They can just point to us to, to bring on the burden. And they still have a nice relationship with the person. Everybody's happy there. I'm the one that says, no, they, they didn't have that position. Their title was much lower than they claimed. I'm the bad guy. And I like being the bad guy. I just wanted people to be honest. That's all. Just don't lie to me. Lie you know to my what? I like being the bad guy too. And I like calling people out. And I think people know that. So yeah, it, excellent. You know, excellent. Jeff, I'm like going to transition up. right into, this is from a Gallup poll, if you like, and I think you'll like this. And I, if we have time very quickly, it's the top 10 lying professions. What people, not what I say, not from the experts, but this is a Gallup poll. So from the people out there, this is what they Where think. The politicians the fall. They're on the, they're, they surely are on the list. Uh, uh, you'll, you'll be happy to see their, their, uh, their ranking, but if you I like to go. It should be like the old Johnny Carson show. Yeah. I have to like, you know, put the envelope to my head and guess the top five. Exactly. exactly. Or we, we could do Letterman do reverse order. We can go 10 to the 10 to first. So if you like Jeff real quickly, the top 10 lying professions are at number 10 are real estate agents. Oh, no, that's, that's tough. Cause I have a lot of my friends are real estate people. So. Um, yeah, but they do. They're, they're unbelievable. You're right. Unbelievable. This is again from a Gallup poll. Number nine are lawyers. Sorry to all the lawyer friends of mine. Wow, the lawyers. I thought they would have been a little bit higher on the list. Higher on the list. Uh, number eight are labor union leaders. Um, okay. I, yeah. Uh, no, no, no. I was, a there. I was a teamster. I know. <laughs> Not to say everyone. These are just the people's uh, uh, listing. Number seven are business executives, which I guess even I would fall under. So, uh, uh, that that's that's that is what it is number six is stockbrokers <laughs> i guess if you've seen the wolf of wall street you probably would agree with that one uh number five are advertising practitioners uh number four are telemarketers and now our top three which i think you'll uh, probably agree with totally uh going three two one we have car salesmen lobbyists and then number one on our list are members of congress so no Not surprise the Senate, just Congress. Just just Congress, which was interesting <laughs> from the Gallup poll. But these right, are senators fields. don't the senators don't lie. So Ted Cruz is telling telling the truth with multiple stories. <laughs> yeah. True. Yes, uh, you know, uh, you, you, you know, when the going gets tough, I always say head to Cancun. But um, uh, works for me. <laughs> it works for you. you know, in a moment of crisis, when you're put in place. And speaking of our, our legislatures, I, I've always mentioned you and I've mentioned. I, I don't know if there's 
uh, any vetting process, but I surely would throw my hat in the field if they wanted to pre-screen people running for some of these offices, because from what I see, uh, lying is definitely rampant there, and especially at number one, as we claim whatever side of the fence you're on, Democratic or Republican. So those are our top 10 fields. Well, what about, and nobody said neighbors, because what if the neighbors are lying that you went to Cancun or didn't go to Cancun? Yes, yes, this is true, or, or you know that you had to go because it was a, a needed family vacation. So uh, I could choose a vacation right now. I'm sure you as well. You know, being cooped inside and and with the COVID and all, but uh, my my duties make me uh, need me here. So I can't can't fly out well, to Cancun. You really anymore. touched another issue on everything that you've talked about today, Sheriff Sharkey, and that is trust. Yes. How do we? How do we? You know, it's good to trust, but you have to, as Ronald Reagan would say, trust but verify. Yeah, and that's all. And again, I often, as I mentioned, get this pushback. Uh, nothing I do is without the consent of the person, and we still get 30% fraudulent, which is a frightening number. So that means someone signs a release, hands it to you, and Jeff says, yeah, go ahead, do the background check. Now, myself, if I knew I had things to hide, I'd say, before I handed it, I'm like, Jeff, let, let me discuss something. And we always say that to our clients. You know, did the person get out in front of anything? You know, That shows to be a, a big step up. And they usually don't. They hand it to you and say, hey, go ahead. Nothing's going to show up. And I come back with no degree three-year gap in employment, expanded uh, dates of employment, false titles, criminal records. Uh, those are the people I want to identify, not us regular people that might have a speeding or a, you know, a poor credit. That's not what we're looking to identify. Well, again, Phil, if someone's looking for you, trust but verify, how do we find you? Yeah, Jeff, uh, right here on uh, Massachusetts, it's 508-230-5901 is the number. Uh, the higher authorities you see, it's uh, higheroth.com is our website. And you can also always email me at psharkey, my name, at higheroth.com. Oh, that's great. And I look forward to speaking to you next week, Phil. More stories on trust, but verify from Sheriff Sharkey. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you.